Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we are going to have some discussion about the MCQs of Miller and Hawley zoology from the chapter fishes. So let's move to the question number one. It's about the evolution of fishes from astracoderms or ancestral fishes. That astracoderm, astracoderms, they are the prehistoric ancestral vertebrates, and their mode of feeding was they were basically filter feeders and inactive filter feeders. As you can see over here, that uh, the ancestral stem of the vertebrates, which are considered as ostracoderms, they were stem vertebrates, dermal, bony armor, jawless, and filter feeder, no paired fins, and cephalization. Some of the characters shown over here. So, right option will be beta. Later on, fishes they developed other modes of uh, feeding as well. Question number two: Hagfishes and lampreys are agnathans, or you can say jawless fishes, and belong to the class dash and dash respectively. Hagfishes they belong to class Mixini, as you can see over here in this classification system uh, taken from the. Miller and Hall zoology edition number fifth edition and lampreys they belong to class Cephalo Spiro Morpha. So right option over here is a beta. But this classification system is a little bit different in the tenth edition system of classification, as the sub, a class of hagfishes have been upgraded to the infraphylum Hyprotrichy and Lampreys, they are also reclassified over here. But it is suggested that you must follow the classification system given in the fifth edition of Miller and Horlozoology as it is recommended by most of the universities as their course contents. Most primitive group of vertebrates, according to most of zoologists, they are the hagfishes, and that's why they are considered as living ancestral forms of most of the vertebrate groups. Number four, most adult lampreys, they feed on other fishes and they are actually feeding as ectoparasites. But their larval forms, they are not uh, parasitic. They are actually filter feeders and they get their nutrients directly from the environment. For example, here is the life cycle of lampreys shown. That adult lampreys, they are parasitic stage, feeding on the feeding as extra parasite on the other fishes. But the larval forms, they are usually filter feeders and they get their nutrients from the water. So right option is delta. Number five, eggs of lampreys. They hatch into a larval form known as the larval form of lampreys is amosite larva. As you can see over here in this classification, here you can see that after hatching, the larval forms, which are filter feeders and partially buried in the sand, they are known as amosite larvae. But the adult forms, they are ectoparasites uh, on the other fishes. So, right option over here will be delta. Number six. Pectoral fins of fishes, they are located just behind their, actually they are located just behind their head region, as you can see over here. Fishes, they have two types of fins paired as well as unpaired. Their paired fins include pectoral as well as pelvic. P for pair and P for pectoral as well as pelvic. The upper fins are known as dorsal, lower fins sometimes ventral or near the anus anal. And tail fins, they are termed as caudal fins. As you can see over here, pectoral fins, they are just located behind their head region. So right option over here is beta. Number seven, which of the following are extinct jawed fishes? Extinct jawed fishes, they are actually placoderms and they are having jaws and fossil record indicates that they are the ancestral <coughs> forms for the jawed fishes of the recent era. Characteristic scales of chondric thighs. These are the four basic types of scales which are found in different types of fishes. 
and chondrichthyes or cartilaginous fishes they are having placoid characteristic scales as you can see here the other scales they have common features of bony fishes such as cycloid tenoid or genoid scales but cartilaginous fishes such as sharks shown over here they are having placoid scales number 9 what percentage of all fishes they exist in fresh water almost 41% of fishes they are found in fresh water and rest of the fish varieties they are marine the first vertebrates were probably they were probably marine environment living and they were ancestral forms of fishes sharks teeth they are actually modified obviously sharks are having placoid scales that's why we can say they are having modified placoid scales in the form of teeth as well these are not the modifications of other structures but placoid scales so right option is charlie and these teeth they are continuously replaced as you can see in the next question teeth replacement is a common phenomenon common process among sharks and young sharks teeth are replaced every 7 or 8 days time it's quite less a time in which teeth are usually replaced and they are continuously shed off as well number 13 range of size in sharks is usually less than a meter to 10 meter but there are some exceptions to this fact that certain sharks may range up to 18 meters such as large whale shark or basking sharks they are also larger than 10 meter and great white sharks they are the, one of the some of the species of the sharks which are larger one but smaller fish species of the shark they are smaller than 1 meter the largest known sharks are whale sharks what is their mode of feeding the largest sharks just like whales and they are also filter feeders and they get their nutrients by filtering marine water <clears throat> number 15 the fiercest and most feared sharks the fiercest and most feared sharks they are mako and whale shark is sorry it's a great white shark and the mako whale shark is not the fiercest one so right option over here is charlie as you can see over here on the right great white shark and the other is mako so right option over here is charlie number 16 lateral wing like expansions of scales and rays that actually modified pectoral fins so right option is beta number 17 chimera fish is also known as it's also known as red fish due to its long tail or caudal fin that's why it's named as red fish as well the first known fossils of fish they are from late silurian period as you can see over here in the paleozoic era uh, at the end of silurian period or early devonian period there were there are the, there were there are the indications of fossils and which are actually fish fossils so right option is delta lung fishes they belong to class sarcopterygii as you can see some of the uh, lung fishes and in the next table you will see the classification as well that bony fishes or ostic thighs they are classified as subclass sarcopterygii or actinopterygii lung fishes and lobe fin fishes they belong to ostic thighs while other fishes they are mostly uh, from actinopterygii which are bony fishes so right option over here in the previous question was sarcopterygii beta number 20 this is the only known surviving oelocanth and that is latimeria species It is the only known coelacanth species with, uh, which is classified with the lung fishes over here. As you can see over here, coelacanths are the lobe fin fishes, and uh, there is only one known species that is Latimeria. Now the members of the Actinopterygii. Sturgeons are large fishes. They may weigh up to thousand kg, and they are valued for their 
is T X. That's why right option is delta, which is used X of the sturgeon, which is used as a food source. Amia fish is known as dogfish or bowfin, as you can see over here. There's a diagram, a picture of amia fish, which is also known as bowfin or dogfish. Earliest fishes were probably scavengers and filter feeders, but the most of modern fishes they have adapted to the agile or active lifestyle being predators. So right option is beta, that modern fishes, they are predaceous. Number 24, spiral valve is found in the intestine of, it's a common feature in sharks. So elasma branks or alpha will be right option. If they have spiral valve in their intestine. Vertebrate heart developed from four embryological enlargement of obviously vertebrate heart is present on the ventral side, so it must be ventral aorta, which later on change into the heart of vertebrates. Number 26. In circulatory system of fishes, how many afferent vessels they carry blood to the gills? There are actually four efferent vessels which carry blood towards the gills for oxygenation. So right option is alpha over here. Number 27. The atrium and ventricle of heart in lung fishes, they are actually partially divided and complete division in the atria as well as ventricle is observed in the higher vertebrate groups. So beta is the right option. As you can see over here, lung fishes they are also a modification of blood supply or blood distribution, blood circulation. Some fishes maintain water flow by holding their mouth open while swimming. This method is also named as ram ventilation method. And mobile fishes such as cartilaginous fishes, tonas, swim with their mouth open to continuously move water past the gills. And this help in the exchange, efficient exchange of gases across their gills as well. So right option is beta. <clears throat> Number 29, which of the following, the supportive structure, is the supportive structure of the gills. As you see the structure of gills, gill arches the seen supportive axis, as supportive axis in the gills. As you can see over here, gill arch is supporting the structure of the gills, while gill filaments, they are the sides, uh, of network of blood capillaries, which are ultimately providing the surface area for exchange of gases. Number 30, in which of the following fish pneumatic sac, they function or functioned as lungs? They were lung fishes, as well as Indian climbers and ancient refugees. In all of these fishes, pneumatic sacs, they functioned as lungs. So right option over is delta. Number 31. Pneumatic sacs which functioned as lungs in many fishes later on, they were modified into dash in many bony fishes. They were modified in the form of swim bladders in the later fishes for buoyancy. As you can see over here, it's the swim bladder which is also known as air sac. Number 32, bones have dash times higher specific gravity than water. Specific gravity, you know, is the property or it's the ratio of density of a substance to the density of water. And specific gravity value of the water is one, but bones are having twice the density as compared with the water. So right option is alpha. Burnt oils are abundant in fishes and they are found in different tissues of the fish, but especially they are abundant in their liver cells. You're quite familiar with the fish liver oil capsules. So right option is Charlie. One of the following is not an adaptation for vision in fishes. Fishes are having lidless eyes, they're having round lenses, and they're having wet enough for image formation as well. But change in shape of lens is a strategy used by other vertebrates. Fishes 
they focus the image by moving the lens back and forth. So right option is delta, that it is not an adaptation carried out by fish eyes uh, for the vision purpose. So delta is the answer. Bony ossicles of fishes they are connected with back of the skull and swim bladder. It is known as vibrium apparatus and it is specially specialized auditory structure which connects back of the skull with swim bladder. Any movement in ambient water may be detected by the fish by using their lateral line system as shown here in this picture. The lateral line system is commonly used by fishes for detection of surrounding waves produced by the predators or any turbulence. What is the location of electrical organ in the body of electrical eel? In case of electrical eel, the electrical organ is located in their trunk. As you can see over here, it's a trunk and large portion with insulating tissue, electrolytes, neuron, and extracellular space which is responsible for the production of sufficient electric force or electric currents. Which of the following organs play a major role for osmoregulation in fishes? Fishes osmoregulate through skin, sorry, through gills or kidneys. So right option over here will be delta. For removal or uptake of salts, they use two types of structures, gills and kidneys. Number 39, which of the following strategies is not used by freshwater fishes for osmoregulation? Freshwater fishes, they have to conserve their salts because there are less salts in the environment and they have to remove the excess water because they are getting much water by the diffusion osmosis process from the skin. So uptake of salts by the gills could be their strategy. Production of dilute urine and large amount of urine is also are also their strategies but drinking fresh water is not feasible for them is not an uh, efficient way to conserve their salts so right option is delta only marine water fishes they drink large quantities of water to compensate the loss of water through their skin so delta is the right option Retention of urea for osmoregulation is the characteristic feature of some cartilaginous fishes and they're classified as elasmobranchs, such as sharks, surrendizer sharks, they retain urea and <clears throat> thus they maintain hyperosmotic body conditions despite salty marine environment. A cloaca is a common opening for excretion, ingestion, as well as reproductive emission. So right option is delta. Number 42, fishes which return to the sea for spawning, they're known as tetradromous fishes. And fishes which migrate between fresh water and marine water, they are diadromous. And diadromous fishes may be tetradromous or anadromous. Anadromous fishes, they return to fresh water for hatching. While tetradromous fishes, they pass most of the time in fresh water, but they return fishing into the marine water. So right option over here will be alpha. Number 43, major excretory product of fishes is, fishes, they remove their nitrogenous waste mostly in the form of ammonia. It's almost 90% major waste. Other 10% waste could be urea, uric acid, or ketanin, or fishes as well as aquatic, most of the aquatic Vertebrates, they release ammonia as their waste product as well as aquatic invertebrates. But mammals, amphibians, sharks, and some bony fishes, they also produce urea as major excretory product. While uric acid is produced by birds, many reptiles, insects, and land snails. Majority of the fishes are oviparous, but some elasmobarns are viviparous, for example. Grey reef sharks and hammerhead sharks, they are viviparous fishes or viviparous sharks. And the last question is, what is the function of modified pelvic fins called claspers? And they are used for sperm transfer and those fishes which are having internal mode of fertilization. 
In so our next questions, our uh, MCQ discussion will be about the chapter amphibians. So, dear students, please revise the chapter before that uh, getting that video. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching.